Well, Merry Christmas. These are great any time of the year, but I think a cocktail meatball is perfect for Christmas in the sense that it has a great, sweet, tangy, great sauce on top of it for dipping, but also for serving. And then it's a really quick thing that you can throw together if you're just gonna have friends over for kind of a potlucky appetizery evening. If you're gonna have cocktails, whatever you want, it's a great bite to have. I love a quick cocktail meatball, and there's a few steps that even though they're easy, make it even better and more flavorful and more moist. So to start, we're gonna talk about the moisture. I do not like a dry meatball, who does? So we're gonna take a couple slices of bread. We're gonna cut off the crust. Pretty simple here. The crust just does never really will break down like the actual bread will. So that's why I'm kind of more making sure to get the crust off of there. But what we're doing is making a panade. So what that's gonna do is we're gonna mix this bread. We're gonna just tear it up in small pieces and we're gonna mix it with milk. Now, breadcrumbs in general added to a meatball, a type of meat loaf, whatever it is, help kind of keep the moisture. But when you kind of first break them down with milk, it retains even more of that and gives it kind of just much better texture in the end. So I'm breaking this all up. I'm gonna kind of, this is just a great trick to do on any type of meat kind of you're gonna do with this. So I'm gonna put that right in there and we're gonna pour some milk right over the top. I always, you know me, I always use whole milk because it's gonna have more flavor, has more fat and that's what you want. So we're gonna work that down in and it's gonna take a little bit while it soaks it kind of all up. And what I wanna do is as it's soaking up that milk, look what I'm doing, I'm mashing it into pretty much a paste. And that's what we want. We want really a paste out of this because that's what's gonna work into the meatballs more. We don't want, you know, pieces of bread. We don't want, you know, all those chunks to come out into it. We want instead it to be the smooth paste that works into the meat that you won't even know it's there when you're done. And that's really what you're wanting. While that's kind of working into it, we're gonna add a few other things to this. So just because we're gonna flavor the meat from this, I'm gonna add some salt. I'm gonna get it right in there. And you know, when you're working with meat, salt is your friend. And it's really gonna have a lot of flavor and season it well. Some pepper. And then what we're gonna add is some onion. Now I'm gonna grate the onion in because I want it to really kind of just melt into nothing into these. I don't want pieces of onion. I want instead just that essence of the onion. And this also means we really don't need near as much because grated onion has, it's like breaking all the cell walls. So you're gonna get a lot more of the flavor right in there. So we're getting all that onion right in there. And then we're gonna do some garlic, one clove. And I'm gonna press that in. Again, I want it to be fully broken down, fully just part of this. So I'm gonna just press it right into there. I love, you know, we just don't give presses enough love. They deserve a lot of love because it's a lot of work we don't have to do. And see, again, I am just taking this I'm making sure to work all that down into it. Look at that. Look at that. That's perfect. We're gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. This, to me, is kind of that depth of flavor, hamburgers, whatever it is, that you, it's there and you think, man, these are good, but you can never pinpoint what it is. That's that. You can probably never pinpoint quite how to say it easily either, but either way. As you can see as I'm stirring this, it's that perfect paste. So now we're gonna add our egg. That's just gonna help everything hold together. It's gonna kind of just create that great cohesion that we need. I don't know, I think around the holidays especially, it's fun to have all these different things that we make, that we add, that we can kind of just enjoy. Now I wanna make sure to get the egg kind of really beat into this, because what we're having now, look at that. It's this like liquid type paste. And this now is all gonna get mixed in with our meat. Now meat is the one thing that, there is no pretty way to do meat on camera. So I'm gonna add half beef, half ground pork. And I'm doing that because I like the flavor that they both add, and I like the texture they kind of both impart. All beef sometimes can be a little tough. The pork adds a little bit more lightness to it. And yes, I'm gonna admit, I'm gonna use my hands and I'm gonna work this together. They kind of can be hard to break down and make sure everything gets mixed together. So I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna do this, gonna get it all cohesive, then we're gonna get out a baking sheet, we're gonna make little meatballs, that's gonna be good. So I'm finishing up, I mix them together very well. And you have to really take time to mix them because sometimes the meats don't wanna to mix together well. But now what I'm doing is just taking a scoop and I'm scooping them. You can see how pretty simple it is. And then I go back and I kind of just make them into a nicer ball, just so when they bake or when they cook or whatever it is, roast, they don't, you know, they hold a little bit better shape and kind of look more like a meatball as opposed to just like this pancake. So I'm kind of just roughly, you know, quickly making it into 
a nice little more of a shape, which you can see here between the two, you know, you have a nicer shape and then one that isn't done, they don't look near the same. So you can't really roll them because they're so tender, which is what you want. You want that tenderness because that's what we went to the work for with the milk, the bread, all that. So I'm gonna finish up with these then we'll get going on them. And it's a really quick and simple delicious sauce too. So it all comes together pretty simple. I wanna make sure these have kind of a crust and a little browning on them, which if you put them in the oven, they'll still be delicious, but they won't get that nice crust on them. So I have a skillet, it's heating up. We're gonna make the sauce in this too. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil and we're gonna just slowly put these on one by one and we're gonna let them just kind of brown in here. We probably can't do them all. We'll have to do probably two batches, but what that will do is create a nice kind of crust on maybe two sides of them. Do you hear that? It's kind of slowly coming. We're gonna put them back on this because they're going in the oven to fully bake. So we can put them back on when they're uncooked on this baking sheet. And then when they're finishing up in the oven, actually baking through, we'll make the sauce and we'll finish them in the sauce. It's kind of like glazing them. Look how good those look. I'm taking the last batch of these out of the skillet as I'm getting ready. And you can see they're just browned on two sides. And that's all we really want is just a crust to kind of begin. And now we can pop these in the oven to finish baking, actually bake all the way through, because all they have right now is that crust. And then in the skillet, this is really a simple part. This is hardly even a recipe. We're gonna add in your favorite barbecue sauce. So whatever that's gonna be for you, which we all have a different kind that we like. We're gonna add that in. And while that's kind of getting there, we're gonna add in some cranberries, which is seasonal. It's kind of what you want this time of year. And then we're gonna add in some orange marmalade. So you're kind of getting that orange cranberry deliciousness going on. And that's gonna kind of just work together. Cranberries have a lot of pectin. So as this marmalade melts into the barbecue sauce, those cranberries are gonna pop open they're gonna get kind of thickened and make this new kind of jammy, barbecue-y, sweet, tangy sauce. And we'll finish all the meatballs right in this. So you can see how simple this is. When you're gonna have a party, when you have people over, you can have these pretty much ready to go. Be pulling them out, finishing them up. And look how festive it's gonna look. So we're gonna let this cook a little bit while the meatballs are finishing off. And I'll come together and we'll have a sauce. The meatballs are done. And while they were cooking, the sauce became done. And what I did was I just covered the sauce while the meatballs were in the oven. And what that helped do was really break down the cranberries and it really helped the cooking process get going. And I made sure as I was stirring it that some of the cranberries broke up, which you can just easily now if you want to go in and press them and they just pop and break. But I like to leave a few whole just cause I think it's festive. And as you can see, as I put the meatballs in, I like to kind of either roll them, but they're so tender that I kind of just like to spoon it over them. And then we're gonna just set this back in the oven, which is perfect because if you wanted to hold it for a party, you could kind of get done before, there went a meatball, down into my grates. Someone's gonna have to clean the stove now and it's gonna have to be me. But anyway, I put the meatballs back in the oven. You could hold them for a little bit that way for a party to keep them warm, but also it kind of bakes the sauce a little bit onto the meatballs as you spoon it over. Kind of see how you kind of just spoon it over and it will kind of bake onto it. I love that. So I'm gonna do a little bit of sauce on them which ugh, nothing to me is more festive than just a good cocktail meatball. And this isn't, a lot of times I feel like recipes kind of go halfway. Like you buy a frozen meatball, throw it in kind of a sauce. This is kind of in a sense, you make the sauce kind of out of bottom things, but you add the cranberries for a really good seasonal hit. But then also you're making the meatballs. And honestly, if you try these one time, yeah, they're the best meatball you've had. And that's what you want. So I'm gonna spread them back out. I have them kind of glazed. Look at that, and you get pieces of cranberry all over. That's what I love. I'm gonna put them back in the oven just for a little bit. Actually, it could be a little bit or a little longer if you wanna turn the oven down. We're gonna let them glaze a little bit more. Then I'll try one just to test them for you guys. Just wanna make sure. I pulled them out of the oven. This is honestly how you can serve them. You could literally put like a toothpick in each one if you wanted to, or have the toothpicks beside it, which to me, this is the time of year where you pull out your good things, pull out your silver, put it whatever you have to make it more special, more festive. You know, I love that. So since it's you guys though, and I wanna make sure I'm not dripping all over the place and making a mess, I'm gonna pull one out, cut it in half, cause I'm not gonna <laughs> make myself look awful. But look how tender they are, how quickly that broke in half. That to me is the whole point. You want it to be really tender, really beautiful. It has the sauce kind of thickened on it.
but I've tried them and I already knew they were good, but. The hit of flavor you get with them to me is amazing. One, you're struck with the sauce first off. You get that sweet, tangy. The cranberry gives it the tang, but then that barbecue sauce really rounds it out, which you can use your favorite barbecue sauce. I always buy a sugar-free one because you're putting that marmalade in with it, which gives it more of that sweet. What though then you love, and I just wanna eat the whole thing, but is that tender meatball. And it has so much flavor with that grated onion, the garlic, the salt, the little bit of Worcestershire. Guys, this is so delicious, and to me it's the perfect accompaniment for a holiday party. One, it looks festive, you get the cranberries, but the way you can serve it, you can put these on a nice platter if you want to, make it a little bit more elegant, or you can serve it like this. Go with the evening, whatever it is. You know if you're going highfalutin, or if you're just going a little bit more low-key, you can go either one and enjoy it. That's what I love about the holidays. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you make it, I hope you enjoy it. It actually could just be a weeknight meal because it's that good. But also I hope you share it around. When you share these videos, it helps me so much, but it helps everyone else see good food, fun food, festive holiday, Christmas time things are easy to do. Bring people together. That is the point of the Christmas season. So share it around, check my website, wiseguide.com for this recipe, all my other recipes, they're all on there. And until then, throw a party. Have a reason to make some cocktail meatballs. I know I'm going to.